what I said. And what I'm saying to you is because the staff wanted a better wage, and who can blame them, the costs went up and the costs would have to go up to pay for that better wage, and the public said we can't afford to ride anymore. Okay. Can we forget the public and say that it's going to cost the government then? But what it's cost them a lot more to keep the men on the dole and, and all the other additives that go with dole, like if you've got a gang of kids. and I don't know whether we're, we're barking up to that. Well, I think the government would say to you it doesn't actually cost more to keep them on the dole. You imagine what a person gets. Take any individual on the dole. The average dole payment might be about, and I'm sure it's not. Okay, 32-ish. Then your rent paid, your rates, your lecky. Right, again. well, let's, let's say 80 quid a week. And the rest, on. Well, I don't think it's going to be more than oh, that. Oh, it is, maybe, with all the additives, but go on. Well, I, I'm sorry, I disagree. I don't think the average payment is in excess of 80, judging by the people that come on this programme. Well, I could give you an example, but it'd be long... Well, an example isn't going to give me an average. An example is an example, full yeah, stop. That's all it is. No, I, when, I worked, yeah. when I worked at the Citizens Advice Bureau... I don't remember seeing anyone coming in that had a colour television in every room and two cars on the dole. I keep reading these stories in the Sun and the Star and other garbage rag yeah, I agree. things, but yeah. I'm sorry, they, they, they do exist, I'm sure, but they don't exist in their thousands. The no, vast majority, no, no. indeed no. millions of people, are living below the poverty line on the dole. Well, if you take an average user of quoted me 80, and a man waiting on the buses with uh, his hair conductor and he's getting 120 and he's paying his way and his tax and insurance and he's coming out with 80, wouldn't cost the government, they wouldn't lose that much by subsidy. It's a matter of opinion, but we'd still end up with a service that is, inverted commas, financially inefficient. Yeah. What we need is a country where the jobs that people are doing are actually paid for by the customers. Yeah. That's what this That's government says is exactly. the only way. I, mean, I wonder if Labour or Liberal or Alliance get in, will they reverse this government's decision? No idea. We shall I have to wait and see. So. The Labour Party say that they will create a million jobs yeah. in the first 12 months. They don't talk about bringing conductors back, though, do they? No, they don't. But That <laughs> would create about a million, I think, nationally. <laughs> yeah, but there'd be two people not taking the money off the passengers instead of one. Anyway, Joe, I'd be happy I'll if you come back, mate. I'd go back on the job and I've finished. <laughs> Good night, God. I think you'd make a very pretty clear. Peter, <laughs> I'll do Graham. As an Irishman, and yourself. With difficulty. I'll do Dean. Uh, it's Dan. I'll do Dan. Yeah, I sent off for a, um, I'm seeking your advice, okay? I sent off for an item of computer hardware last September, and uh, 28 days later, I got a letter saying that, uh, that they're out of stocks and it would follow soon. So, waited another couple of weeks, nothing came. Rang them up, and they said, you know, they're getting the stocks in soon. You've not got it yet? No. I see. Have you paid any money? Um, yeah. It was they... Jack, and it was cashed um, a week after we sent it off. And did they tell you to allow any specific time for delivery? Uh, 28 days. Has that expired? Yes. Right, and tell them you want your money back. I've tried it, and um, rang them up, and... No. Have you written? Thing. Have you written? Yes. And what, what did you say in your letter? Um, I just dem uh, demanded my money back, gave, gave all the details that they actually took. And what was their response? Uh, nothing. Yeah. Then I suggest you write again and tell them if you've not got your money back within seven days, you're going to take them to the county court. And if you don't get your money within seven days, take them to the county court. All right? OK, sorry. How do Dan? Sorry, that was Dan. How do Paul? Stained glass windows keep the cold outside while all the hypocrites hide inside with the lies of statues in their mind where the Christian religion made them blind where they hide and pray to the god of a bitch spelled backwards his dog not for one race, one creed, one world but for money, effective, absurd do you pray to the Holy Ghost when you suck your host? do you read who's dead in the Irish post? do you give away the cash you can't afford? on bended knees and pray to the Lord Fat pig priest, sanctimonious smile, he pays the money, you take the lies, this is religion, there's a liar on the altar, this is religion, the sermon never falter, this is religion, and Jesus Christ, this is religion, cheaply priced, this is Bible full of liable, this is sin, an eternal hymn, this is religion, this is the holy religion. Thank you, Alan. Uh, just one problem. Uh, first of all, I personally don't like the that modern idiom of poetry, but that's another story. I'm rather more romantic than that. But you said bitch spelt backward spells dog. I mean, doesn't it spells hktib? 
Good night. Good night. Uncle Joe has always been a sucker for the nicer things in life. That's why, one sunny day, it was decided that Uncle Joe would create a masterpiece. And masterpiece it was. The Uncle Joe's Mint Ball was born and has been with us for almost a century. And he'll tell you, if you try an Uncle Joe's Mint Ball, you'll find it very hard not to try another one. Uncle Joe's Mint Balls, traditional quality, and now available in a handy 75 gram pack with no artificial additives. Buy some today. MAS Sales in King Street Stores Wigan give you the best goods on offer at low, low prices. Visit the nursery department for mums and mums to be with prams, buggies, toys, cop mobiles, and much more. Plus the hardware department with toiletries, pottery, ornaments, in fact, everything to brighten up your home. MAS Sales in King Street Stores, King Street Wigan. Hurry, the bargains won't last for long. Hello, this is your friendly bank manager speaking. How can I help? Well, I've seen this lovely Ford Orion at Bradshaw's and it's absolutely perfect for me. So I was wondering if you could improve on Bradshaw's finance deal. What terms are Bradshaw's offering? For a limited period, they're offering finance from 2.5% on all their new Orions. 2.5%? Impossible, I can't improve on that. <clears throat> By the way, where is Bradshaw's? Marsh Lane, Preston. Hello? Bradshaw's, Marsh Lane, Preston. Phone 54083 for written details. It's melodic moment time. Three tunes that I rather like. Ring him if you dare. Alan Bensick, the late night show. And at 11 minutes to one, the telephone number if you wish to join us is Preston 561000. That's 0772 561000. Alton Towers 87 is now open. It's the biggest day of your life. The sound you are about to hear is the sound of a double glazing salesman from Hughes Robinson of Wigan as he gets ready to pounce on yet another unsuspecting home. That's right, no sound can be heard at all because Hughes Robinson don't employ salesmen, they are supply only. So if you have a window that needs replacing, simply measure the window and we will make it for you. For example, a 4 foot by 4 foot UPVC double glazed replacement window is just £117. Hughes Robinson, ring Wigan 32 48 59. Remember the number, Wigan 32 48 59. Hughes Robinson, they've got it right. Away, away, on an Avalon holiday. Avalon Travel in conjunction with DFDS Seaways invite you to Legoland, a holiday packed with adventure and fun for all the family. Departing the 28th of June on a four-day mini-cruise, staying in superb hotel accommodation. You'll have a holiday of a lifetime in Denmark and with your visit to Legoland. The price just £109 all in. This holiday is on a first-come, first-served basis, so hurry before it's too late. Ring Avalon Travel now on Bolton 398 788. 398 788 how do Tim? How do that? Goodbye, Tim. We're not waiting for you. How do Dillis? Hello, Alan. Yes. <laughs> uh, remember you on about Orford Lane Co-op last night? Good grief, the, uh, yes. You know the cash system they have. I was watching a film on Channel Four tonight, and it was in Central Paris. I think it's the same kind of system. Uh, the bloke in the film sent a letter, pneumatic, and they, they put it in, like, a metal container and stuck it in a pan. And then in a tube. Yeah. It's not quite the same. They used to use that in the big co-op in Warrington Town Centre, but they didn't use that in the little one. And that was, it. that was what they did. They put the money in, and they screwed the top on, and they put it in a tube, and it went... <laughs> and disappeared like a rocket. Yeah, up to, like, a little account. That's right, and not long later... It come back again. Will you change? It's brilliant. <laughs> Why don't we do it now? I don't know. It's a great idea, isn't it? Because it, it means... It's certainly a faster postal system that we've got here. <laughs> I don't know if it's still operating. The film was 1969. It sounds brilliant. A great idea. <laughs> Sucks it away. But you see, if we did it in the big shops now, because I think we should bring it back, if we did it in the big shops now... You wouldn't have people running in and grabbing money out the till because there wouldn't be any money in the till. It'd yeah. be in the office upstairs, and that could be secure. Oh, it was a bit slow, though, wasn't it? But it, where are we all rushing to? Oh, 
Oh, I don't know. Everybody wants everything to be done fast. Where are we going? Why don't we take us time and slow down? We might even live longer. Uh, Do you know, it's better to be late in this world than early in the next. Oh, yeah. So why don't we slow down? Take us time. There's no hurry. I agree. Good. <laughs> See you, Dilly. Ciao. How are you, Martin? Hello, Alan. Hello. Uh, it occurred in the reign of King Herod, did this story I'm going to relate. It's created a stir down the ages, and it's never been proved to this date. A young Jewish maiden called Mary, who lived many centuries ago, attended a good seminary, and the mean of sin didn't know. It is said that one evening when strolling in the gardens, admiring the moon, she suddenly spotted a vision and forthwith fell down in a swoon. The vision was tall, dark and handsome, of angelic mien, so it is said. He was wearing a long woolen toga with a halo surrounding his head. Vision looked down at young Mary. What a beautiful girl, Vision thought. I've come with a message from heaven, and of what happened next, there's some doubt. It was several months later when Mary, a streamlined young figure, had lost, and her father and mother got worried. We must marry her off at all costs. The Sanhedrin then it was sitting, discussing grave matters of state, when an elder just happened to mention that Mary was lacking a mate. The president tabled a motion, which was passed without further ado, that someone arrange for a husband and marry a legal like too. A cabinet maker called Joseph from Galilee, so it was said, had stated his liking for Mary, who was clever and fairly well-bred, then been given a self-contained outhouse, for housing was short even then, where Mary could set up housekeeping, with the oxen and such in their pen. So Joseph and Mary were married and looked for a future sublime, when all unbeknownst to the family, a young lad was born before time. Now Mary had views on his naming. Well, be honest, really no dad. Bill, Norman, Charlie or Stephen, they were all them names just right for a lad. Jesus Christ, said Mary, it's tragic, the problems that I have to crack. By heck, that's a good one, said Joseph. I was going to say, let's call him Jack. <laughs> Thank you very much. My pleasure. I won't go to heaven for laughing at it. No. But no, you but will go to hell for reading it. it. Reading it and writing it. Yes, I know. It's been the story of my life. <laughs> First, <laughs> incidentally, go on. if I may, Alan, just let me congratulate you on that um, clever analysis of what you said regarding the, the um, your discussion earlier on about uh, what the government should do or shouldn't do. It's probably the first time it's ever been set out correctly that it's not really up to the government to do it. It's up to industry and trade and, and, and us going out and doing the jobs and selling well, the goods to well other I, people. I don't know whether it's down to me, that one, but thank you anyway. How do, Chris? Hello, Al. Yeah. Yeah, I went to doctors on Monday, right? I don't know whether it's right or not. Well... It might have been Tuesday, I don't know. Well, it was Monday, right? I don't know, I've just told you, I don't know. Why do you keep asking me if you're right? OK, it was Monday. Oh. And uh, he gave me this cream, right, because I've got psoriasis, you know what that is? Yes. Well, and um, it's it's burnt all my skin, no, like all my skin's got dead burn, it's like it's all red. And like when I get well, it, it was back, fairly red before, wasn't it? What? It was fairly red before. No, it, it's it's usually white, it's like white flaky. Oh, that one. Yeah. And like he gave me this, this ointment, and like all my body's gone red. And uh, it's no when I get in the back. It burns, like, as soon as I get in, like, hot water. Why are you telling me? Why don't you tell the doctor? No, well, I'm phoning you to, to inquire, like, out, out, like, whether you know whether, what I could do legally about it. Well, what you could do for a start off, you could go back to the doctor and get some other cream. What a divvy. How do George? Never mind George. We'll talk to Mark after this. Smith's Bookshop now have in stock the Aussie Rugby League video of the 1986 Kangaroo Tour, packed with two hours of excitement. And coming shortly, another collector's item, working in the Wigan Mills. Plus compact disc classics with one pound off, like Dire Straits' Brothers in Arms, Queen's Live Magic, U2's The Joshua Tree, and Phantom of the Opera featuring Michael Crawford. Hurry down to Smith's Main Street Wigan today. Senator, Britain's largest sunbed manufacturer, now offer their exciting 1987 range featuring ProTan, the super-fast professional tanning tube. See the wide range of sunbeds only at the following Senator main dealers. Lancashire Solarium, Queen's Mill, Ripon Street, Preston. Darwin Sun Leisure, 56 Blackburn Road, Darwin, and 3 Preston New Road, Blackburn. And Terry Brown UVA Sunbeds, Wallpaper Supplies Building, Library Street, Wigan, and 22 Lee Road, Lee. Senator and ProTan, the professional way to tan at home. The road reaches out in front of you. You need to be there on time. The car you need must have performance, style and real quality. 
In an instant, you have the solution. Gordon Ford of Wigan. Check out Gordon Ford of Wigan. Visit their showrooms. You need to have peace of mind and to enjoy miles and miles of trouble-free motoring. You can rely on Ford. Choose Ford. Drive Ford from Gordon Ford, Wargate Wigan. Their parts, service, body repair and sales departments will keep you on the road. Ring Gordon Ford on Wigan 41393 for a test drive today. At SKD Typewriters, we have several brothers. The brother range of electronic and portable typewriters, plus stationery, calculators, office equipment, office furniture, and a full range of copying machines. That's why SKD Typewriters are called the Electronic Business Machine Center of the Northwest. Access Visa and Part Exchange welcome at SKD Typewriters, 71 to 75 Railway Road Lee, Ring Lee 603326. SKD Typewriters and Brother, the future at your fingertips. How do George? Is it? Oh, it's Mark. How do Mark? How do Alan? Yeah. Right. I just want to know why you treat scousers so badly. Because they like it. Well, I mean, they are some of your best callers. They like it. They like it. The evidence is, and I take it from your mouth, not mine, they're some of my best callers. Why? You can't because they dislike it. Otherwise, they won't phone up. They say, hey, we're not talking to him. He doesn't like us. Yeah, but you treat them like dirt. Well, they still ring. So, like I said, they must like it. Well, I mean, the way you treat them... It's well, I know how I treat them. Mark, we're not debating how I treat them. There's no dispute. You ask me why. I'm not... I'm I not said because they like it. I'm not expressing myself. I'm not interested. Mark, they like it. You said yourself they ring up. We've had about 30 on tonight. Well, it can't because they don't like it. Or are you telling me they're stupid? Well, the are you are you telling me they're stupid? Are you telling I'm me they're stupid? They're stupid. That might be a fact, but I don't know. That well, well, you see, they ring up and they know what I'm like. Then, oh, everybody knows what you're like. So what's the problem? Well, they know what to expect. They still ring up, so I can only assume that they like it. Everybody else phones you up from within. Uh, uh, Mark, 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 what we've got to come to terms, what you've got to come to terms with, is they keep ringing. Now all I can say is if I'm offending them, why are they ringing? When you've got an answer to that, you tell me. Everybody else. I know, Mark, everybody knows, you've just told me that, why are you telling me? You're an idiot, Mark, you must be a scouser, you must be a scouser, it's the only answer. The one o'clock news, this is Mike Carson. The accountants, given the job of policing the British gas share flotation, believe they've uncovered massive attempted frauds. Top city firm Touche Ross have spent months sifting through the millions of applications and they'll be sending several thousand to the Director of Public Prosecutions for further investigation. Touche Ross will also be overseeing the government's next multi-million pound sell-off, Rolls-Royce. And Chief Investigator Richard Blackburn warns he's more than ready for investors who want to try and fiddle the system. My experience on gas has enabled us, we believe, to be more effective and efficient in the ways we use, which we're going to use on Rolls-Royce, so that we think we can identify more people before the allotments are made than we did on gas, so that we'll actually be able to stop them getting their shares. And um, we have found more sophisticated ways of identifying possible fraudsters. The lawyer who's leading the fight for compensation for victims of the Zeebrugge ferry disaster says he doesn't now expect there'll be any wrangling in the courts. It follows the news that relatives will be getting at least £80,000, double the original figure suggested. And Solicitor Michael Napier says in the case of some victims, there could be much more money. Well, if you take, for example, the case of a young lorry driver who's left a young wife and perhaps a couple of children, earning a pretty good annual income, one can very quickly arrive at a large sum of money that the widow and the children will certainly need for their future. It's not difficult to get a claim like that well above £80,000. Yet another U.S. Embassy Marine Guard has been arrested in the Sex for Secrets scandal. He's suspected of espionage while assigned to the American consulate in Leningrad. From Washington, here's Andrew Mandelstam. Sergeant John Joseph Warwick, like the other Marines detained, succumbed to the charms of an attractive Soviet agent. But unlike the previous cases, the incidents occur not in Moscow, but in Leningrad, where Warwick was assigned briefly in 1981. The growing security scandal led to this comment from the U.S. Secretary of State, George Shultz, who lashed out at the Russians. We didn't break into their embassy, they broke into our embassy. 
and we're damned upset about it. Mr. Schultz, who leaves for Moscow later this week, said he would raise the issue with Soviet officials. Andrew Mandelstam, IRN, Washington. Now the strange story of the Marquis and the murderer. In the Second World War, an American serviceman carved his initials on a tree in the Marquis of Hartford's estate. After a worldwide search, the Marquis has finally tracked down the man who left R.J. as the only clue to his identity. He turns out to be Robert Johnson, who is now serving 120 years in a U.S. jail for murdering his four children. The Marquis says he's flabbergasted. My immediate reaction was to laugh because it came as such a shock. I mean, you know, it, it, it seems slightly funny that the man I've been searching for and have been building up as maybe a representative of the American forces who fought on our side and all that sort of thing, uh, to find that he was in fact a murderer, it struck me as being funny. Independent Radio News. Please listen to my ditty. It may not be very witty, nor even slightly funny, but it will help save you money. For me, from cradle to grave, I aim to shop and save. I buy out I need, for next to out indeed. There's meat and veg and cheese and bicks and booze and cigs and clothes and cards and sweets and pigs and pet food and household things. So shop and save a load down Blackpool's Waterloo Road. In the market they call you, and over at Road, the M2. Thank you. Poetry in prices. From the New Market and M2 Market. It's the place to come, where shopping can be fun. This Saturday, from 9 till 12, the chart of Lancashire's favourites will be played on Lancashire's favourite radio station. The Red Rose Top 40 on Red Rose Radio, with a little help from Red Rose Kitchens, the number one kitchen for your home. The chart is compiled by computer every week from sales throughout the North West and nowhere else. Catch the Top 40 this week and discover which song has been made number one by you. Red Rose Kitchens, always the number one for your home. Ring him if you dare. Alan Bessick, the late night show. Very nearly five minutes past one. Preston 561000 is the phone number. How do Samantha? Hello, Alan. Um, I'd like to comment on the lady that phoned in about the royal family earlier this evening. Go on. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but they haven't actually said what's wrong with the Queen's cousin. Like, obviously, she's met in the mental home. But how can people comment on the Queen's reaction and that? not knowing how the woman is. I mean, if she's bad, then she's in the right place. I don't think the issue is in any way connected with whether the individual is in the right place or not. Yeah. What it is concerned about is, do we want a royal family that puts its relatives into an institution and forgets they exist, indeed tells people they are dead? That's the but issue. Like now, say, do you agree with that course of action? Oh, yes, I agree with that, but it's like you say, it was 40 years ago. But, I mean, I, I don't accept the fact of the Queen, like, well, I'm, I'm not saying it's the Queen of forgetting the family. I honestly don't think that we could expect our Queen, who's a very intelligent That's woman, right. to be unaware of what was going on. She must have been a party to it. Yeah, but at the same time, she is, they are our royal family, and... Don't get me wrong, but the lady that spoke earlier, I mean, I'm sure I'm half her age, and it's just respect for the family. The well, family why again. should... Well... <laughs> They're the head of our country. Well, Samantha, why should we respect a family that doesn't respect its members? Why should we respect a family? Let, let us assume a family in your street yeah. put their child in an institution... Yeah and told you they were dead and never visited them and never did anything, just just paid the bills. Yeah. And told you they were dead. Would you have much respect for that family? Um... It's a simple enough question, Samantha. Yeah, I yeah. realise you find the answer uncomfortable because no, it doesn't it, suit your argument, but no, you wouldn't, would you? It's not that. It's you wouldn't have any respect for them, would you? You'd say, well, that's not a very nice thing to do, is it? 
I'm not a nosy person anyway. Well, it doesn't matter whether you're a nosy person. If you're not a nosy person, with respect, Samantha, why are you poking your nose into this? The simple fact is, I think it's like you said, we don't really want to know what your family is, because that's your, your pride. Yes. So I don't think why people should keep... Every time you read the paper, they've always got something to find about the royal family. But, Samantha, but, I mean, your, your words... For for that. Your words were, they're the head of our country. I actually disagree with you, but those were your words. They're the head of our country. Yeah. Have we, the country's members, not got a right to expect a decent stand of behaviour from our head of the country? Yes, but, I mean, well, is they're it... not letting us down. I mean, they're not going in... Well, are they not? Are... things like that. Samantha, you say they're not letting us down. I'm sure a lot of people do feel let down. I'm sure a lot of people are let down. Our Queen Mother, remember us all cheering and dancing and being happy for her 80th birthday, and all the time she's telling us her cousins are dead and they're not. Mm, but it's so funny how it's all fetched out lately. I mean, I've never yes, heard it's all of her cousins it... being dead and her No, neither. Dead. Well, all you have to do is read Burke's Peerage. In Burke's Peerage, it says they're dead. It tells you the year they died. They're not dead. Well, one well, of them I is. I apologise for that, then. Well, you don't have to apologise. You don't write Burke's Peerage. Yeah, but, but I mean... I want but the to information is there. Wrong. The, is? the information that's been made public is a lie. Now, I don't know who told that lie, and I don't know why they told that lie. That's my argument, see. We never get the truth, and it's not fair. But you know, I do... People without the truth. I am prepared to bet... I'm not a gambling man, but I'm prepared to argue that the Queen was aware of that lie. Now, and if I... It in the way, I suppose. Well, she's never said, no, you can't put that, that's untrue. Aye. You can't put that, it's a lie. True. They are still alive. Aye. Now, even if the Queen didn't know, mm. I'm fairly sure the Queen Mother did. Yeah. Now, we're all saying what a lovely woman she is, and she is. She but, is. <laughs> but if she's a party to a lie, are we to question how lovely she is? Mm. Is... Is she like Joan Collins when you see her on the telly with the big shoulders? She's lovely and got a mouth like a sewer in a railway station. Well, love to see her in the morning and all. <laughs> well, yes, but what I'm saying is it's all very well. We can build these images of people, but are they real? I mean, everybody thinks I'm a foul mouthed rat. The truth is, I'm a cherub. Oh, well. <laughs> they phone <laughs> you, though, don't they? <laughs> all right, Samantha. Okay, Thanks thank for your you. call up. Ta ra. How do Tony? Hiya, Alan. Mm. Uh, I must agree with you one thing about the Scousers. They are stupid. They're not stupid. Well, most of them are. They're no, they're not. You up. They're not stupid. Well, they call you fat. Well, they're right. Are you saying I'm not fat? No, you are. I must well, agree why you. is it stupid to say you're fat? You, you say that someone that calls me fat is stupid. You've just called me fat. You're stupid. Good night, stupid. How do Ray? Yeah, hello, Alan. Why, why do you think you know everything? Because I do. How do Pat? Hello, Alan. Hello? Hello. Oh, um, I was listening to the conversation about the cash, the cash um, system. And funnily enough, I was in Bristol the other week, and uh, they did have that system in a well-known store, so it must be on the way. I go to Bristol lots and lots. Which store? Yeah, CNA. CNA? Have yeah. they? Next yeah. time I'm in Bristol, because my in-laws live round there, or my outlaws. So do not. <laughs> I'm <laughs> going. Children do, yeah. I'm yeah. going. Next time, Well, actually, I'll be yeah. there. Yeah, they put the money in, and, um, that y you know, you give them, and you get your receipt and you change back. I need some new underpants, <laughs> so I'm off to CNAs. <laughs> yeah. Next time. Um, <laughs> By the way, do you have any tips on um, how to get rid of the paint smells? I've tried an onion and all sorts of things, and I'm <laughs> feeling very, very sick. I'm, I've got seven doors to paint, and I'd really, oh, I've only grief. done the undercoating. Well, it's so, too late now you've put it on, but yeah. are, I don't know how good they are, mind, yeah. but there's some things you can buy from most handyman shops that do away with the smell of paint, and you put it in the paint before you put it on the door. Oh. I don't know whether it works, but the stuff's there to be had. But you can't stir it in non-drip gloss, could you? It'd be a bit difficult. <laughs> Perhaps okay. you should dip your brush in it. <laughs> I don't know. But it's, yeah. it's, it's like a little capsule and you pour it in the paint and stir it. Uh -huh. Non-drip gloss, I am to clue. But uh -huh. you shouldn't be using that stuff anyway. Use proper paint, love. OK. All, I don't know whether non-drip gloss is any good or not, but all I know is whenever a painter comes to your house, he never brings non-drip gloss. He always brings paint. Well, if I put proper paint on, it drips all over the place. I've done the undercoat. Well, you're very doing well, too but... much. You're doing it too thick, aren't you? Use a bit less. 
Yeah, if somebody else did the doors, I'd be all right if I just had to do this. I know the feeling. I'm no one to talk. When, the when I paint, I get it in the airs, under my arms and everywhere. I'm yeah. telling you, it's agony when I paint. Well, I, I'm doing it actually for my mum, and I think the thing is, we've well, got to like, get a new car. Well, do you, live, do you live with her? <laughs> Hmm? Do you live with your mum? No, I... Well, you don't have to worry about the smell of paint, then, do you? Just go home, love. Yeah, that, well, the thing is, it, I, it's all the staircase and landing. I've come home and I was there all last night. Oh, dearie me. I, I don't know the answer. It does smell horrible. Yeah, I well, agree perhaps some of the listeners are able to ring in and <laughs> oh, have a, one we, of these marvellous tips. <laughs> you have started summer now, Pat. Uh, OK. <laughs> Cheers, love. <laughs> right. If you know how to get rid of the smell of paint in a newly painted house... Pat would be loved to hear. She would love to hear, not she would be loved. She would love to hear. Give us a ring on Preston 561000. But don't tell me, I didn't ask for it. It's Pat that wants to know. Away, away, on an Avalon holiday. We'll all have fun lying in the sun on an Avalon holiday. Avalon Travel, in conjunction with DFDS Seaways, invite you to Legoland, a holiday packed with adventure and fun for all the family. Departing the 28th of June on a four-day mini-cruise, staying in superb hotel accommodation. You'll have a holiday of a lifetime in Denmark and with your visit to Legoland. The price just £109 all in. This holiday is on a first-come, first-served basis, so hurry before it's too late. Ring Avalon Travel now on Bolton 398 788. 398 788 to book your holiday. Please listen to my ditty. It may not be very witty, nor even slightly funny, but it will help save you money. For me, from cradle to grave, I aim to shop and save. I buy out I need, for next to out indeed. There's meat and veg and cheese and bicks and booze and cigs and clothes and cars and sweets and pigs and pet food and household things. So shop and save a load down Blackpool's Waterloo Road. In the market they call you, and over at Road, the M2. Thank you. Poetry in prices. From the New Market and M2 Market. It's the place to come, where shopping can be fun. It's sale time at Upstairs Downstairs, and to celebrate, we're actually giving things away. For instance, if you buy a new three-piece suite from our extensive range, we'll give you £100 of holiday spending money free of charge, so you can have a holiday you'll remember for a long time. But hurry, it's not every day we give £100 away if you buy a new three-piece suite. Upstairs Downstairs, Furnishers of Distinction, 300 yards from the Wigan Pier in Walgate, Wigan. Late night Thursdays and free delivery in the Red Rose area. Hello, Richard Serling here with exciting news for Soul fans this Easter. The place to be is the Rupi Village Dupi. Night Spot on Central Drive in Blackpool. The date is Easter Monday, April the 20th. And the count. event is a nine-hour soul and funk all-day oh spectacular. With the top DJs from England and Scotland spinning all the big import sounds and all your favourite oldies as well, it's the place to be on Easter Monday. The Blackpool Soul All Day Special at the Village. Doors open at 3 on Easter Monday afternoon and you can dance till midnight. Admission just £4, but get there early. Interest in the North West looks like making this the best soul event of the year. See you then at the Village in Blackpool on Easter Monday, 3 through midnight. Holy mackerel. How do somebody, probably Tony, how do Tony? Hello, Alan. Uh, I wonder if you could settle an argument for me. There's only you can do. Oh, I see. Uh, we, we're sat here, we've been sat here having an argument about how much time lapses between you and I speaking on the telephone and the conversation coming over on the radio. <laughs> I say it's a matter of seconds, they say it's a matter of minutes. Oh, they're wrong. It's seven seconds. A maximum of, a maximum of ten seconds. Yeah. But the easiest way to find out, of course, is to put the radio on in one room and you be in the other room on the telephone and in fact if your friends now turn on the radio they will find that what I say now yeah. they will hear some ten seconds maximum later about seven ten as a maximum right thanks very much it's easy how do Ethel hello Alan yep would you like to insult me <laughs> it's not easy <laughs> well I'm a scouser oh I see well I think you've been insulted enough haven't you love well, I haven't, personally. <laughs> you said you liked... Scousers like being insulted, so I thought I'd let you insult me. Well, it would seem that they do. Because I insult them a lot and they're always ringing up. I know, do yeah. You, do you get offended when I say Scousers are whatever I say? No, I find it quite amusing. That's the thing, you see, because... 
I'm going to get in trouble now, but I like Scousers. Do you? Oh, God. They have got a superb sense of humour. Yeah. It is the best sense of humour in the world. It's got to be. They live in a dump. It's got to be. Well, I don't. I live in Warrington at the moment, actually. You're the only sensible Scouser. You escaped. I did. What has Warrington done to let you in? They like me. They don't, do they? They do. They like Scousers. Good grief. Hmm. Well, Warrington used to be my favourite place, but it's gone down the nick now. <laughs> yeah, it's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> it was all right till you moved in. Anyway, I like Scouts. They've got a great sense of humour, and I, I've got nothing against a great sense of humour, and I don't mind cashing in on it, so there you are. OK. It's a right. How do you, John? Good morning, Alan. Morning. Uh, two points of information. Uh, the troubled relatives of the royal family, as it were, I have a mental age of about four, so the question of rehabilitation mentioned by a previous caller I don't think really arises. Um, the fact is the Queen Mother, if one reads the news properly, has, has known of this for six years. She, she may not be legally obliged to maintain a cousin, of course, but she has been sending birthday presents and Christmas presents, etc. I thought Brian Ricks was president of Mencamp, but however, the Queen Mother is apparently. It does seem a little strange that she's been unwilling to reveal. I think the Queen Mother's the patron, isn't she? Oh, is that, is that the I case? I think that's the terminology. Oh, she's the patron. Not. It's it's uh, a figurehead, if you like. Brian Ricks yeah, is yeah. the active person. Yeah. It does it seem a bit strange to me, anyway, that they, they weren't willing to come out with the, the truth in view of the more modern attitude to mental illness, anyway. It's, it's not a reflection on... on but perhaps person. they were already on the treadmill and couldn't think of a acceptable public yeah. way of getting off. Right, now, there's another point before I discuss with you what I really want to discuss with you. Well, we'll have to be quick. It, uh, it'll be very quick, this. 